Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. Today we have Dan Siskin joining us because we are taking a look at the Sikorsky MH60S Seahawk, which is one of the more popular helicopters we've released this year. And I can see why, because just looking at it head on, it's incredibly intimidating. Comes with an awesome crew of six figures, which we will have landed in here to talk about. But man, Printed elements, play features, what does this model not have going for it right now? Uh, the model's awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't use, you know, I, I like what I'm working on, but mm -hmm. I think this is, this is kind of like to the next level. Uh, spent a lot of time on this model. Mm -hmm. um, had actually some inside help, some actual pilot. An actual pilot was uh, contacted us. And actually, if, you, if, if you're a Navy personnel wondering why we did the MH-60S instead of the MH-60R, which is another mm -hmm. uh, multi multi use helicopter from the navy uh, you can blame uh <laughs> you can blame this this individual pilot who, oh, fair who, enough. who twisted my arm to do the 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 the, the uh, S version. S version. Yeah, instead. right. Yeah. Well, could there be a better resource than someone who is no, an completely pilot. familiar it's with this? It's this guy right here actually. So oh, that's cool. You can, you can blame him cuz that's that's, <laughs> that's that's the guy. So so um, yeah, I mean it was it was Really cool to get like the in, inside knowledge, and and for a change, you know, when you're looking doing research, you see all these different pictures of, mm -hmm. of different variations, and, and to get somebody to say, oh, this is what we actually do in real life," right. versus whatever the picture is. A lot of times you see pictures online or, or in books, and like mm -hmm. they, a lot of times those are just like experimental configurations. And, sure. And you can't tell what's experimental versus what's like a day-to-day -day operations. So yeah, unless you're sitting behind right. the, the cockpit controls, right? Yeah. So this this is uh, this is the version that you're seeing here is typical of what you would see outfitted for the amphibious assault ship versions. Cool. So there's, the, Navy, the Navy has these things on uh, littoral combat ships, they have mm -hmm. them on amphibious assault ships and then on aircraft carriers. Right. And this is, this is um, um, we did the amphibious assault version because um, that's what we're making. We're making the Macon Island. Mm -hmm. And we would be, this would be a typical um, helicopter that would be used for, it's a multi-mission, that's what the M stands for, it's an MH-60. Mm -hmm. uh, S is, uh, it's just the, the latest version of it. Mm -hmm. um, and this was actually designed to replace the Sea Knight helicopter. Okay. So the C, it's the MH-46 C, or CH-46 Seahawk, or Sea mm -hmm. Knight. Yeah, Sea Knight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this is a replacement. So it's like multi-mission, uh, air rescue, search and rescue, uh, has weapons, can do interdiction, all kinds of, all kinds of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and the users would call it the Sea Knight. Cool. Um, so instead of the Seahawk, it's, or it's, you know, they call it the Sea Knight. Right. So it's in homage of, of its predecessor. Mm -hmm. um, it has crazy weapons, it has crazy sensors. It is a fully modern Sikorsky helicopter. It's what they call the glass cockpit. There's no like dials on the, on the, the control panel. It's all glass. It's all it's like four big glass panels, which I'll, I'll, I'll take it apart and show you the, the, the cockpit. Actually. Cool, all right, <laughs> let's see it. So um, I guess we can go over it. First, the big noticeable thing are these, these oops. I, I, just knocked <laughs> off the tail landing gear because I'm a big ham-fisted guy. Um, so you, first thing you see are these these little winglets on here. Um, they're not typically used all the time. This is a kit that would be normally used if they're doing some sort of, they need some sort of a extra firepower. So yeah, right. In, in this case, we, we have the, the Hellfire missiles. Because they look um, so cool, especially that slope, just the, the entire yeah. kind of like oval shape to the front of this thing. So they, they call those bat wings, and it's kind of like the reason cool. for it. So you got the little bat wings. The, uh, uh, I have, on this one, I have Hellfire missiles, which of course you'd have to have the sensor, mm -hmm. the, the, the FLIR to use it. Um, Basically, which this helicopter has, we have all this stuff. Uh, there's printed elements galore, according, including that that sensor ball on there. It's just kind of turned in a weird direction right now. I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. <laughs> Especially looking at the side of this thing, though, it's very much like count the printed elements. I mean, from nose right, to tail, right, right. they're just covered. Here, I'm gonna actually pull pull this wing off here. This this you don't have to you don't have to fly it with the the. The, oh wow! Uh, the rocket pods on here, so that's you know this. If you're doing a different mission, you don't necessarily need these on here, so they're not. They do come off in the real thing. If you look at a Blackhawk, you'll see that there's a little stub right there. Sure. Um, and you know they'll stick the navigation lights. You can just take your navigation lights on, off the the tips of the bat wings and stick them on here if you if you really cool. choose to do that. Well, I love how quick and easy <laughs> you can do that. I mean, my right? goodness. So now you can see the rest of the weaponry. You got this. In this case, we have two two, two M two forty machine guns. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, this is typical. This is this is typical of, of the way it's set up. You usually just have one M two forty on one side, and sure. then you have the the GAU seventeen, which is just a a navalized airborne version of the M two forty. So mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's a fifty caliber machine gun. Um, and in this case, we have the giant barrel. 
Will from Brick Arms made us an extra long feed chute because yeah, sure. they had this big ammo bin. Apparently, that ammo bin could be placed in, inside the uh, uh, inside the, the cabin here, anywhere they, the, the the gunner wants it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just bolt it to the floor. Um, one thing you can you can't really see it. Uh, I'll pull them out in a little bit, but. We have uh, the extra fuel tank in here. It's one thing that the M860 has is a, is a fuel tank that they can remove. It's a removable mm -hmm. extra fuel tank, um, and it's in here. I, I built it with it in here. You, you can choose to build it without and sure. have the fuel tank not, so you can have more guys in there. Basically, behind the fuel tank is a seat. Oh, okay. So it's kind of the <laughs> trade-off. You either get to go a little bit farther or carry some extra men. Got right, it, right. It. And, and from my understanding, they usually just leave it in there. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't often take it out. Um, we did print. Um, I didn't put opening windows like on the last. Uh, I think the Pavehawk has the actual windows for the for the gunners are. We just printed this on here. It's not a sure. Um, it's it's not a real window. It doesn't close. Uh, there's one on each side. It looks good though. I should point out that this is all printed elements except for the stickers on the tail and on these doors, the cabin doors. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why we did the cabin doors is we didn't want to cross the seam with right. with, with all with the pr with printing, and it's the tail would be impossible because the bricks are on their side, so mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to really print on there. Uh, but we did do something that's kind of unique. So this is in Combat Sea Squadron 22. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Sea Knights. This is the default uh, the, the build version. Yeah, Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 22. It's right on the printed tiles here. But we did make us extra sticker sheet. Wow, that's a hefty sticker sheet too. So the purpose of this sticker sheet, so while we just did the, the by default it's it's 22, which is based on the, on the East Coast, um, we wanted to include all the other squadrons that were amphibious assault squadrons, and that's what the sticker sheet is. So you'd be able wow. to ch change out uh, all the different squadrons that are based on amphibious assault ships, mm -hmm. amphibious assault groups. Um, if you wanted to do carriers or do some of the other littoral combat uh, you know, squad based squadrons. I don't have all those. We didn't do them on this show. Right, but that's still quite a bit of variety. I mean, think of all the different right. ones, that, especially if you wanted to, you know, order your own bricks and make E1 for each one of those. I mean, that's that's yeah. pretty cool. So, say maybe in the future we'll do the other squadrons sure. or something like that. But this for now, that's 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 the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, the I mean, this is like seven, eight different squadrons. Mm -hmm. um, so you do have plenty of options to do. Uh, I didn't put any tail numbers on it. We were going to put serial numbers. Like that's getting ridiculous. Like we did for the uh, the Jayhawk. Sure, it has different actual bird numbers. But didn't didn't want to go that mm -hmm. that detail. This is still pretty cool, just because like how distinct and different all of those are. I mean, that's right. so you get the tail flash. These are generic. The generic tail flash, and then the door badges. Door badges. You just stick those on each each cabin door. Mm -hmm. Pull off the or don't use the sea knights if you want to choose to do one from your ship or your squadron or just one that you like the best. <laughs> yeah, that's really really cool. That's awesome. I love the customization and that kind of stuff because even when people you know are doing mocks and stuff, there might be a certain situation where they're like, oh, this this would have been involved in this, this wouldn't have, etc. Having the ability to do that. Right. Adds everything. And we're building a very specific ship, so I want to mm -hmm. be able to put the right the right birds on, on the ship that we're building. Exactly. So, um, other other than that, there's a lot of printed parts. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's insane the amount of printed elements on the, uh, that are on here. Did show off that little sensor ball on the front. We do have the printed windows. There are printed doors for the pilots, mm -hmm. which of course open. The doors do open. Um, you have uh, printed the warning. The warning. Uh, you know, the, the jet intake warning. Well, even the very back here, we've got printed stuff on the on the tail. Oh, right, right. little cheese. Well, slopes. you have the, ch the chaff dispensers, mm -hmm. the, 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 the stars and bars, the Navy, and yeah, these, uh, the cheese slopes here, they have the, the missile warning sensors on them. Which, how cool is that? I mean, <laughs> that's just, it adds so much to be able to see all that stuff come together. I've always said, you know, Brickmania loves to blur the line between what's a Lego model and what's just a regular model. Sure, sure. And, and this is another one of those examples where when you deck it out like that, and even just the way the bricks are turned, you'll see in the instructions, there's just kind of some, some extra flares that really make it look like it should. Right. You. And there's there's a lot of innovations in this. So this looks a lot like the other you know Black Hawk based helicopters mm -hmm. we've done, but there's a lot of changes that actually went into this. One of them is the way that the winch system works. Um, this one, instead of having the winch on the outside like it did before, which is actually way too big, it was mm -hmm. like you know it looked it was workable, it was playable, it was a great play feature. I actually buried the the drum of the winch inside this whole structure up on top. So if you wanted to. If you want to play Do with your it, rescue pull the, mission, yeah, yeah. Pull, pull, the, pull the string out, pick up your basket, which we did include the, yes, the stretcher the basket. basket. Comes with. It's it, when not in use. There's a little bag. It's it's stored in, but you you can't really fold up the <laughs> this version. 
So yeah, you do have the, the, the ability to, to, to drop your winch with the rescue swimmer, which is included. Mm -hmm. Six figures included this. Lando will be going over all those. Yes, because there is an awesome crew for this. You want to raise that winch back up, you, you, you can. The you secret can hatch of yeah. winch control. That's yeah. so awesome. So, I, you know, I like to do that kind of stuff in, in, in my model. So I did, I did put that in there. It takes forever because it's, it's such a small Still, little Still, how much fun <laughs> is that? That's so cool. What an excellent play feature. So besides that, we'll just take this off. We let the string hang down. Uh, the doors on the sides, the, the pilot doors will open. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can open them without pulling it off. It's a bit of a trick when you have big fingers like mine. <laughs> so pilot doors do open. Uh, good luck getting the pilots in and out those doors. It, I experienced it, that a little bit, yes. It, it is possible, but it's, 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 it's an effort. Um, <laughs> these, these back doors, the cabin doors don't slide, but you can pose them in any, any, any mm -hmm. place. Similar to the Black Hawk. Yeah, it's the same concept. Yep. Um, if I wanted to put a sliding mechanism there, it would be really bulky. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it, it's doable, but I, I, I've chosen repeatedly not to, not to do it because it's that, kind of like that play feature versus the realistic shape, yeah. you know, trade off that you have to do a lot in Lego. Yeah, it's yeah. just Lego pieces aren't that small. So, mm -hmm. um, you can you can pose it any way you want. This the whole thing does actually fold up. So when I mean, you're on a ship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, these are stored in hangars under the deck, right? And they have to go up in elevators, and they have to store them in, in tight, confined places. So they do have to make these things fold up. So the the rotors will fold up the way it's supposed to. Uh, that's you know that's pretty common for all the all the, the Black Hawk based uh, birds that we've done. Um, and the, you know you can do all four blades. Not a, not a big deal. Cool. Um, that's exactly how they would be on the carrier, or uh, in the hangar of the assault ship. So get these back the way they were. One other feature, um, when they really want to make it small, they will actually fold the tail up as well, which of course um, we can do is do that on here. Let's see. First we fold up the, That's smooth. the, the horizontal <laughs> stabilizer and then we turn the whole tail wow. over that way. So it gives it a little bit shorter footprint. Yeah, you can see how compact this, this big intimidating model. I mean, when you take the bat wings <laughs> off, fold everything down, you, you can really make it compact. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Ready for transport on the USS Macon Island. Yep. <laughs> or the assault ship of your choice. Yes, or the assault ship. Every, of your you're choice. all making assault ships, right? We're all making <laughs> that's a collective effort, right? We're not alone here. Yeah. <laughs> so, awesome. Um, yeah, let me let me pull out some of the, the other printed elements here. Mm -hmm. Actually, what I'll do is we'll, we'll show you the cockpit because we do the, the cockpit interior is all printed. Oh, pull these doors off here. Yeah, we do not mess around with those detailed cockpits. Some of the uh, <laughs> Some of the detail we've been able to cram in there. You've got, if you guys have seen the uh, AC-130 Designer Studio video, uh, you take a little bit of look at some of the stuff that's going on in there. So. They, uh, they, they went off the hinge and doing the same thing here, I assume. Yep, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so this one has, this is the new glass. This is the, the, new, the new display console. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a new version that we've, we've never done this before. So it's specific to this helicopter. We'll use it in all the glass, cock, glass uh, they call it a glass cockpit. We'll mm -hmm. use it in all the, the, the upgraded uh, Black Hawk base helicopters moving forward. There's also also this big, you know, control panel that's for the pilots that sits between the two pilots. Oh, let's get into the cabin here. I'm gonna pull out some of these other printed elements that are, you know, it's, it's when we bury the printed elements inside the helicopter. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny. Oops. But it's fun to look at while you're building them, and especially the control panels. If you check some of those out, I mean, the guys like Slam, they hide so many little fun Easter eggs, etc., uh, in these printed elements. I mean, they're they're worth not just building into your model, Oops. but actually taking a second to, to to look at a little bit of what they've done there, because uh, just like Landon with his figures, uh, you'll find some some little gems if you look close enough at some of these. Uh, some of these printed elements, especially the cockpits and other ones that are internal of these builds. <laughs> Breaking the whole helicopter. So <laughs> That's we also, okay, it's yours. Yeah, we also have these cute little bags. Um, this would be the bag that the life raft goes in, which mm -hmm. we didn't include a life raft, but you, you, know, you chuck the life raft bag out of the helicopter. Right, the <laughs> water, inflates, yeah. Indiana Jones style, right? And this is the bag that, that they store the, uh, the, the stretcher, the collapsible. This is an mm -hmm. These are actual things. We had to like find the manufacturers and look at their websites like, hey, what, what are these things? What, what does this look, look like? like? Yeah, yeah, so we, you know, we, we do, when we can find the stuff to research, we will, we will do it. So, mm -hmm. um, and I think it, you know, yeah, well, I'll let Lando talk about it, but even, he was even talking about some, talking to some of the people about who make manufactured equipment used by the pilots sure. here, so pilots and crew. Yeah, there's, there's nothing to left, no stone left unturned <laughs> when it comes to getting all this stuff exactly right. We try our best. Mm -hmm. So, which is all you can ask in, for. In, right? in the time that we're allotted. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, there is quick turnaround in this stuff. But I mean, look at even for the for the amount of time you're able to turn around something this incredible and this fully loaded. And you can really see the team effort in these in these builds because obviously the design is incredible. But really, what really brings it together is all the printing. In some of our cases, the 3D printing, UV printing, the sticker sheet, etc. A lot of the research that goes into those additional elements, and then obviously a totally awesome crew to go with this build. So. Very, very cool. Any other features you want to go over? No, I pretty much destroyed the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now that we're down one helicopter, let's uh, bring in Landon and we'll take a little bit closer look at this six person crew included with the Seahawk. All right, so epic model, Oh yeah. epic crew, six people, and a couple of really cool varieties going on here. There's kind of an interesting storyline behind some of these figures at least. Absolutely. I mean, first of all, it was one of the coolest part was actually being able to kind of have a little bit of conversations between um, like the actual pilot. So yeah, that was, that was cool. Mm -hmm. And people that, that uh, have contributed and you know have, have been in these amazing vehicles. So um, that was awesome. Uh, but also just digging into the research, uh, the, into the source material. Right. Uh, finding but that them. insight's got to be second to none. Yeah. I mean, it's it's... It's casual. It's these are real people ultimately. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 nice seeing that and uh, like these vehicles almost seem like it's like it's like such big awesome things, but they really are just normal people like that are uh, working with them. So mm -hmm. yeah. So where do you want to start on the figures? What, what do you think would be good? Well, they're all lined up nice. They're and it kind of seems nice? like I was gonna say it kind of seems like we get more variety as we push that sure. direction. So let's start on this end and we'll work our way down. All right, starting over here, obviously we got the loadouts of the pilots, which would be these two guys. Um, they got the brown boots, that's kind of a notable feature. Uh, and then the rest of the crew uh, with just the regular black boots there. Um, but other, other than that, it's a similar loadout, or it's the same loadout. Um, the, uh, we have the survival vest, and there's a, the, uh, like a life preserving unit, or like a flotation device that is uh, kind of draped around their neck. You can kind of see on either side. And then it goes around the back where it's attached to that uh, molly webbing. That's cool. Yeah. So that what the function of that is there's actually a little pull cord here on the on his left side um, that he would grab and that activates uh, this, this inflation and this thing just poofs up huge, you know. So um, keeps their head above the water pretty uh, pretty easily. Um, then moving down, you got some pouches. There, there's um, I'm not exactly sure what they would store in those uh, individual pouches, but this is again snacks. It, it's snacks. I would store snacks. Uh, this is a survival vest. You know, um, sometimes they're you know they're over the water. So historically, I've seen like shark repellent pouches in there. I don't oh, know if they're cool. still doing that. <laughs> but um, hey, if you're gonna fly over the water, yeah, why would you want to go without shark repellent? Right. <laughs> other um, other other things I've seen would be um, like dye packets where you'd open up this packet of, it's, it's so they can find you, incredibly fluorescent um, like dye. Like Top Gun. Like Top Gun. Like Top Gun. Yes, you know, the exactly. goose scene? Yeah, when like it's all Top over. Gun. Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and then there is a, on the left, there is kind of a, a little personal oxygen unit um, that, uh, you know, you maybe get a few minutes of oxygen out of that thing. So on the, on the sleeve, we have a, the US Navy um, flag there with that don't tread on me uh, snake. Uh, so that's a that's a throwback flag. So that's cool that they were they were flying that for a little while. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then we have the uh, patch on the other side, um, and then overall just kind of a nice color shifting to get that pickle suit color just right. Um, some good detailing on that. So these guys are uh, these guys look pretty slick in this kit. Um, so get two pilots um, and pilot co-pilot, and then you have the crew. Uh, same load out there um, with some different uh, you know faces on all these all these people. Yeah, cool little customization there. Yes. I like the, the difference in all of them. It's like we've said in crews in the past, you can give them your own backstories and uh, well, that make happened. it your own. Absolutely true. Uh, next up we have our uh, Navy Corpsman, the search and rescue uh, guy. It's, it's, um, these are some of the most highly trained soldiers that we actually have. Um, you know, they're, they're trained for all sorts of different, uh, so they're fully trained in, in, uh, like in the medical realm. And, and then obviously skilled riflemen too. Yeah, skilled riflemen, skilled swimmers, skill, you know, they can jump out of airplanes. Wow. They, they can do a little bit of everything. So um, totally underrated, really awesome. Uh, then just going off some very source imagery, I'm not making this up, um, whether or not they actually use those sunglasses in combat. Is they still look so cool. A little questionable, but I did find a picture of, uh, of one of these guys rocking those bad boys. Um, so he figured why not, but that's actually a really cool head just in general because mm -hmm. you've got that the uh, helmet harness that's 360 printed 
all the way around. Uh, you got that grungy beard going on because uh, they're above the law, so they sure. do whatever they want. Um, yes. On top of that is this really cool fast helmet with some all new printing. Printing, yes. Let me make sure I have that straight on here. Uh, yes, all new printing on this uh, fast helmet. This figure is so decked out, it blows yeah, my mind. Yeah. I mean, perfect caliber, printed fast helmet, unique face arc, 360 head, 360 torso. Like, man, yeah. I love this figure. <laughs> no, he it's just really great. awesome. He turned out really great. Um, so that that fast helmet, we've been you know developing this over time and continually adding a, a little bit of new art here and there where it makes sense, uh, and just really fleshing this thing out. So the you know just getting a nice color shift on those uh, those headphones of that uh, contact headset, um, just kind of really bringing it to another detail level. Mm -hmm. The uh, the scar, of course, um, I mean this this gun turned out great, uh, lent itself really well to. I don't know if you get a good angle there. Um, lent itself really well for a bit of color shifting. It's nice that it comes in that standard tan color. Um, and uh, yeah, just adding a little bit of details on the rails, different markings, you know, the grips. Um, trying to just get as much detail onto this thing as possible. So. Such an excellent perfect caliber. Yeah. Just like everyone, I'm gonna be asking, is that gonna come out by right, itself? I know, I know. <laughs> let's, let's test it out with the kits first. Yes, and I then know. Let's see how we ramp up that production. Um, so yeah, and then, you know, the loadout is, I guess this, he's wearing the um, um, woodland camouflage pattern, so that would probably be working with the Marine Raiders, let's say, mm -hmm. um, and who would be working with like the Afghan National Army, something like that. That's maybe what this is representing. Uh, we're also seeing just woodland camo kind of more often these days. So sure. It's interesting to see that kind of throwback camo coming, coming back. Um, moving on, we have the search and rescue diver. Um, this guy is so cool, jumping out of the helicopter, getting into the water, um, he's wearing this uh, this dry suit, I guess. Um, and actually, you know, went and found the the uh, what was it? I found the the manual for this suit. It was kind of cool to page through that. And really, uh, yeah, just it's on it's online, um, and uh, just kind of cool to find the company and do a little bit of research on, you know, this they've been making this stuff for quite a while, and, mm -hmm. and uh, they're still using it today. And um, Different features, I guess, uh, quick, the goggles are funny. Those are just stock Lego goggles. And then um, these, uh, these SEAL dudes, they're, um, they, they, ha they have printing all along. Their, their, their goggles are pretty square, so I, we have printing to make these goggles nice. More square. square? Cool. They're super square, chunky goggles in real life. Uh, so that's funny to see that. Um, but uh, the suit, dry suit's got some reflective strips on the arms, uh, just so they're a bit more visible. Um, in the water or wherever, and uh, or wherever, you know, who knows where they're going to be. Just the water, I guess. Just um, the water, any kind of water. Yes. And we have that, it's a pretty low profile um, like vest. Again, it's, it's that you pull the cord and it inflates on you. Yep. Um, but pretty low profile, doesn't get in the way too much. Um, and then you can see that little pull cord, that red, uh, there's like some beads on it, little pull cord there. Um, and what else? Full harness that wraps around on the sides, goes on the back. So it's it's a pretty as far as artwork goes, it's pretty simple, but it's kind of a slick looking package here with those um, with the fins. Yeah, it really all comes and together the and stuff. So yeah, this was a really fun crew to put together. Um, pretty intense week that I had putting this all together under the deadline, but I think I hope it came out okay. I had a lot of fun making it, any, making it anyways. Yeah, I think it absolutely did. A crew, a crew is uh, unique and detailed. Uh, as the model itself, no doubt. Landon, thank you for showing me these uh, awesome figures. Thank you for having me. Okay, so that does it for this designer studio about the Seahawk. Uh, Dan has a little bit of work ahead of him to, uh, to put this thing back together <laughs> after uh, taking it apart to show off all the features. So we'll give him time to do that. Otherwise, make sure you go over to BrickMania.com and check out this awesome kit. Otherwise, tune in next time when we review another BrickMania kit.